Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to MS Project Made Easy. Today we're going to be talking about the timeline and the time scale. Sound kind of similar, but they're kind of different tools that you can uh, utilize in MS Project. You're familiar for sure with the time scale uh, in looking at it, but you probably aren't aware of how easy it is to make adjustments to it. But first, let's talk about the timeline. And the timeline is this area up here. You may or may not see it typically on your screen. So if you don't see it, don't worry about it. You can always go to the View tab uh, over here uh, where it says View and click on Timeline. So you see how I clicked on it and it disappeared? That's also another thing you can do if it kind of gets in your way or it annoys you and you don't use it, you can shut it off or you can turn it on. The other, the other thing that you can also do is you can grab that bar up there and pretty much hide it and then it just shuts off. Uh, so that's uh, giving you a sense of how that moves up and down. Now the timeline, why would I want to do this? It says add tasks with dates to the timeline. So for example, if I wanna put uh, this excavate foundation, maybe I feel it's important, to the timeline, I can click on it down on my uh, screen here. I can right click and you'll see that it says add to timeline. So that will just put it up uh, up on the timeline. Usually you can't read everything because it's taking up a smaller, smaller amount of space if it's just an activity, but if you hover over it, it'll give you the information about what's going on with that activity. The other thing, of course, if we put something up there, we can also, by right-clicking on it, remove it from the timeline. So we can just go down here and we can click Remove from Timeline. So nothing's permanent. You can put stuff up, take it down, however you wish when you're working with it. I usually use the timeline and you know some of my uh, clients, one, one senior uh, vice president of a large uh, construction company was always saying he liked the timeline because he would put sort of high-level uh, summary tasks of the work breakdown structure so it very clearly sort of give dates for them and then the milestones always wanted to show the milestones and then they could have those discussions with the consultants and the client they could always dive deep into a project schedule if they wanted to but it was nice to have that across the screen you would also use it to put it into a presentation or to send in an email for discussion purposes uh, so that's something that you can use if there's a few things that you want to discuss and you're talking about them you could always just throw those few line items up onto the timeliner and then make them discussion points or presentation points. For as far as the aspect of adding milestones and things, it's pretty easy to do once you know certain things. There's different ways of doing things with the timeline. I usually stick to what I know, uh, which isn't much sometimes, but uh, if you go to the view tab, uh, remember we've discussed in previous videos, I guess now's a good chance to say uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have quite a few MS Project uh, videos and tutorials uh, under my playlist. If you look for the playlist on MS Project, there's a whole bunch of stuff on uh, teaching of different courses. I'm a professor of construction management, so that's where my background comes from. And I do a lot of consulting with big construction companies. So I, I've learned Microsoft Project really well over the years, although every day I learn something new. Uh, so getting back to the point uh, here, if you've subscribed, you've got that covered. Uh, if I look up at the timeline and I've gone to the view tab here, uh, what I'd like to do is add the milestones and I'd like to add the major summary tasks um, to my pro of my project. So what I'm going to do is while I've got everything opened up, so all the subtasks, everything is opened up. And if you don't know how to do that, remember you can go under the view tab outline and just say all subtasks and that way everything is opened up nothing is rolled up because if I roll things uh, then if I go here and I go all subtasks it opens them up and I'm going to go filter and I'm going to say I just want to see milestones there you go milestones so it will still show me the summary task but it shows me all of the milestones and that's um, pretty clearly laid out there uh, but maybe I don't even want to see the summary tasks. If I didn't want to see them, I could also go to the format tab and along the right side here where it says summary tasks, I could close them for now. Now all I see is my milestones. 
so if I wanted to put all the milestones on the timeline, I could pretty easily do that. I could just highlight all of the milestones and I could right click and I could say add to timeline. And now all the milestones for the project are listed along the, um, mile, along the timeline. So that's great. The other thing I could have done though is I could turn that back on the summary tasks. And if I'm gonna do that, I really should highlight everything, including the major summary tasks. And what this is is really uh, got all those uh, major summary tasks with the milestones that are listed within them, uh, which is good. And I could then just again, right click and go add to timeline. And so now it's added all of my summary tasks there. So I can very clearly see everything up there. Uh, I can see it down here too, but you know what? I don't wanna leave down here like it is up there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back uh, to um, just seeing everything. So all I have to do is go back to view um, where I have the filter and say no filter and all my tasks are back, but I still have this nice sort of heading that shows me all of my uh, major headings, the dates, the start and finish dates for them and my milestones. Now, by the way, the milestones very often will get in each other's way. You might have to do some adjustments uh, if you're gonna use this tool. It doesn't always work you know, fantastic if you've got a project that's running maybe three or four years, it's gonna scrunch down and things are gonna overlap and that might not be su such a visual advantage uh, or it might take a lot of, you know, just these kind of um, adjustments like I've got here, I've got inspections approved, I've got two overlapping each other here like occupancy and substantial completion, but I can pull them aside and I can customize it so it looks a little bit better. I could also go in here and I could change colors, you know, if I wanted to change the format or if I wanted something to stand out uh, in, you know, the text to be uh, red, I can do that sort of thing, right? So uh, all that kind of stuff you can do. Present For presentation purposes, it's really helpful that way. And if it's something you just wanna have sort of a sense of what's going on, you don't always have to have it taking up that much space either. You can just pull that up if you're doing work down here and you wanna take a few minutes and just sort of think about what's going on in your project, you can use it this way too. So it's not always uh, gonna necessarily be in your way. You could also just shut it off or turn it on, right? And that'll stay uh, in place. And as I mentioned before, uh, if you right click in this area, you can copy the timeline for an email or you can copy the timeline for a presentation and you can copy and paste it into your presentation or send it in an email for those purposes. I'll show you in a minute though how I usually use, I usually use the snipping tool because I find that's a little bit um, easier to use in, in a lot of ways, uh, but um, I'm just kind of used to using that. Before I get there though, uh, I also said that we discuss the time scale. And so the time scale is this, uh, line across the top of your screen and it shows the activities and it's got two tiers in this particular case. A lot of people recognize the time scale, you know, and they, they know that you can go to the bottom and you can zoom in and, oops, and you can, I'm still up there. You can, you can zoom in and out up there too, by the way. Uh, you can uh, zoom in and out over here, right? And if you zoom in, it basically, uh, this changes like to months. And if you zoom out, um, you start to see days. And I find that very often when I zoom out, I see the days, but I'm not too thrilled with it because it shows me such a small um, area. And by the way, when I do that, you notice up here, it produces two bars. So that's why I'm kind of doing these together because they kind of interrelate. Uh, as well, uh, because I can actually uh, pull this to, because what this is actually showing here, I should explain that, you know, this is October 10th, and what's this, the end of October, beginning of November, right? Well, you see the two bars, that's the end of October, beginning of November, this is the um, beginning of October, well, beginning of October is back here, so we're probably at October 10th, right around here, okay? So this is really showing you that space that you're in. 
and what's being displayed on your screen. So you can see it in relation to the whole project. So one is giving you a micro view uh, and the other is giving you a macro view of the project. Very often we're thinking very granular on our projects, but it's nice to take that 10,000 foot view of your project and go up and down. Uh, in construction management, you know, project managers, they tend to think a little bit more longer term into milestone dates because they're dealing with the consultants and the clients and they're very concerned about those dates. Site supers, who are a very important function of the project, they tend to think on a shorter time horizon, like their six week look aheads. That's all important to them and they're dealing with everything that's happening weekly and daily on the project. Uh, so it's nice to be able to look at things more granular, but also to be able to look at things um, taking the long view, taking the long view and the short view. So that's why that's kind of interrelates inter, uh, over there. But it kind of bugs me all the time when it's I, I zoom in and I zoom out and you got these dates and sometimes uh, it seems like it's taking up a lot of space Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you can adjust the time scale to suit your purposes. I just double clicked with the right button on my mouse and it brings up the time scale box and like there's endless customizations you can do here. The default typically from Microsoft Project when it's loaded is two tiers. You could actually have three tiers if you wanted to. Uh, the top tier would be in the way it's set now but again you can customize it to so many different so many different things is showing is going to show years. Uh, this is showing um, months and years, and then this is showing months or days, depending on how you've got it zoomed in or zoomed out, right? So if I just scroll a little bit, so you got November, you know where it's starting and where it's going, and then you've got uh, the dates, etc. I usually don't do three tiers myself. I usually um, just um, do two tiers. So I'm just going to switch it back there. Uh, what I do a lot though, and again, you can change the units, what each tier is showing, you know, when you're, because it says bottom tier. Uh, so you could, I want the bottom tier to be days, the middle tier to be weeks. Uh, so here you got days, you got weeks. And I want, if I had three tiers, well, it says none. If I put three tiers, then I could decide, you know what, I want the top tier to be quarters, if I wanted to do that, or half years. You know, so you've got a lot of different choices of things that you could do as far as customization. Where I find the most use out of the timeline, like I said, I usually don't do too much there, uh, is that I find the most use is squeezing these. So it's so, so wide apart. I like to squeeze them down. It usually starts around 200%. I usually put it at around 50 or 55%. I've got a pretty wide screen. So 50% works pretty well. Kind of depends on the medium that you're using. My laptop, uh, usually I'll put it 55 to 60. As long as I can see the, the days, I'm good with it. Uh, but it really, I find, is helpful to be able to customize it in that way. I should also mention that if you're looking at the middle tier here, the labeling, you know, you can customize how it shows the labeling. There's a lot of different customizations. For those of you, you don't like the sort of the standard labeling or if yours has a little bit different than that, you don't like it, you can go in and you can adjust that and then I'll change that for you too. So that's how you do that. I'm going to click OK. What you should see instead of seeing, what do we see? One, two, three, three and a half weeks. We should see a lot more than that and probably about six weeks or even more. So I'm going to click OK. Oh, a lot more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a lot of weeks. If that was too much, I could always go 70%, 80%, whatever works for you. I like to see a lot on my project when I'm looking at it. So I would just go to the task view for a shortcut, scroll to task, and it brings up all of my tasks. And I can now see quite a bit of information that's going on, yet I can pretty clearly see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and how long things are taking. So you figure out what works best for you on the medium or the size of screen that you're working with, and that can be quite helpful in that way. Uh, as I said, this'll, this'll, this bars here, you can actually pull it to zoom your project to fit your screen, right? So you can do that too. Uh, of course, when I zoom it like to be that big to fit the screen, I no longer have those single days that I had um, worked so hard to get. But there you go, You're sh I'm showing a lot more stuff on this particular example. Now I've got this whole thing 
uh, pulled out here. I've got all of my activities here. And where I would probably go with this is I would use the snipping tool if I wanted to take a shot of something. Uh, so for example, I might uh, slide down, click here. I just type S for snipping. Usually brings up the snipping tool. Uh, I'm gonna go new and then that gives me my screen. And I, I'm just gonna take a shot of what it is that I want, which I don't want the toolbars. So I'm just gonna click that and I'm gonna bring it across to here so I get all of my activities in place that I wanted. And now I've got this nice screenshot. If this was what I wanted to discuss with a client, I could click copy. I could go to uh, PowerPoint. And if I'm in PowerPoint, I could go control V uh, it usually goes in a little bit big and then I can zoom in uh, to make it whatever size I want for my uh, presentation. So if I want it to fit in there, uh, I could do that. And then I've got this on my screen and if I was doing a presentation, I could discuss it. I could always go into uh, PowerPoint and then I could even use the draw drawing tools in PowerPoint. I could, you know, put in a text box if there was something I wanted to explain. Uh, or I could uh, put uh, some arrows and, you know, explain different things if I wanted to relating to a milestone date and an activity. I can do all sorts of customizations at that point to get my presentation uh, across. So I find it's a useful tool that way. And if I didn't want to have the Gantt chart below and I just wanted the highlight of my timeline tool, I could crop it. Uh, and just bring it right up to my um, timeline tool and then I would have that. So different ways of presenting uh, the information that's very, very helpful uh, for presentations, for emails, for communication purposes. So that's the, that's the main purpose for the timeline in uh, MS Project and how you can use the time scale to gather your information that you are after. Um, for those purposes. The other thing too with the time scale, if it's showing you like multiple days, sometimes you can zoom it out uh, to get the individual days that you're after. Uh, the other quick and uh, the quick way to also do that is if it's zoomed in like this and you want to view it uh, where you can see the, the days, days relatively quickly, just go to view, go to where it says time scale, and this is another quick shortcut that you can quickly go to days. But again, to make it smaller uh, for whatever purpose that you're doing, uh, you can zoom it in or zoom it out that way and see more weeks. So that's what I wanted to cover today, everyone. I hope that helps you with your presentations, your formatting, um, reviewing uh, information, seeing things from a macro level, seeing them from a granule level and being able to flip flop with it. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. And please don't forget to uh, click subscribe. It helps me out a lot and uh, click the notifications. Uh, your comments, questions, uh, experience with the MS Project are welcome too as we build this community together. Bye for now and have a wonderful day.